My name is uh, Kristen Westholtz and I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Chemistry at the College of William and Mary and I'm very fortunate to have a great group of students who works with me in my lab and we are using surface enhanced Brownon spectroscopy to study dyes and pigments in historical works of art. And we're interested in analytical tools that involve non-destructive or minimally destructive sampling, particularly for, for works of art. What's beautiful about Raman spectroscopy is that you hit your sample with a laser and you obtain a very specific signature or fingerprint that is unique to that particular analyte molecule. It's pretty much exactly like taking someone's fingerprint with ink. You know, each person is very individual, very specific. And it's the same thing with a molecule. The structure will affect how it responds to being excited by the laser. If we're trying to learn the identity of a molecule, we can um, compare it to a series of knowns. And so it's pretty easy to line things up and say, oh, it's obviously this, because it has these same series of peaks. And that's the same way you would you know, identify someone with their fingerprint. Working in this lab, what we use it for is identification of um, artist material in historic paintings, things like that. Um, so we've been able to work with Colonial Williamsburg and their um, painting conservator there and help her, you know, identify some material for treatment and for advising on, you know, how to display things. You know, it's nice to see that there's some immediate application. <laughs> So this is the portrait by Robert Feek. It's a portrait of Mrs. William Nelson from about 1748. Dr. Westholtz and I used samples from this painting early on with the SIRS uh, investigation to, to look into some of the organic dye-based pigments and were able to definitively find the carmine lake. Uh, carmine lake comes from these crushed cochineal insects from South America. And so these insects, they lived on cacti. People would take them off the cacti, crush them up to extract carminic acid, and then mix them with some sort of mordant to create the pigment carmine lake. So what this tells us is that this artist was using pretty advanced materials to create realistic flesh tones, um, which is pretty remarkable. We know from artists' records, diaries, etc., that they they really enjoyed that pigment. We have um, Charles Wilson Peale later in America talking about um, first his enjoyment of the living quality that it brings to the sitter's flesh, but then he becomes aware at a certain point that it is a fading or fugitive pigment and he vows to not use it after that point. Um, and we haven't had the ability before to to take such a small sample from these very uh, important areas that we don't want to harm um, until the SIRS, where we have this really powerful tool where one colored pigment is enough to definitively identify it. So now we can use that tool to look at, say, all of the peels in our collection that span that time frame where he said, I will not use this carmine anymore, um, and actually to see if that is the case. Having this type of project is extremely beneficial for me, for just enriching my life as a scientist, for the students. I think that they get to see you know, a broader world. I think from a, <laughs> a philosophical standpoint also, people often view science and art as being mutually exclusive. And I think that this type of project really expresses to the community that you can be both. You can fluent in both and actually the life of a scientist is a creative life. You know, students that were not formally interested in chemistry are now going to graduate school in chemistry or are planning to because they saw this wonderful world and saw that you know science doesn't have to be beakers in a lab, it can be looking at paintings and looking at art objects, which I think is, is really fabulous. So it's also been a really good educational opportunity. And some of my students are, are now working with Shelley to gain some more experience in, in conservation so it's been a really nice two-way street from not only a scientific you know, underpinnings um, standpoint, but also from an educational outreach perspective.